Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. It is Tuesday morning. I'm going to dim the lights for you because it's easier on the eyes. Yeah, so let's jump into the price action. It's bright, it's early, it's 6 30 a.m. Markets are about to open. Let's check out not only the liquidation levels, but what is going on in the economic calendar that could make or break these charts. Make or break, we are at a bit of a, you know, pivot, major pivotal point on the market. And we've been talking about it. Well, I'm probably going to give a test to this trend line. If it does break, um, I would suspect a return to 25,147. And some kind of a bounce from this level. If we bounce, retest, and reject, put in another lower high. That would probably be your confirmation that we're going to see some lower prices. Uh, lower prices coming in. Coming in. Well, um, the two-day volatility uh, move here is going to hold some weight. So unless over the next two days or one day in 11 hours, we can get back above 26300 flip that mo momentum back to the upside. Uh, then, well, the next signal we'll be looking for is volatility expansion above 25%. What does that mean? This uh, <clears throat> this guy's going to swoop back up, regain the moving average, and something like that above 25%, which is a little bit higher, and that will goose the odds in a favor of a 30% move. And 30%, where does that take you? To the downside. 30%. 30%. 30%. Interesting enough, that comes down to about, wow, that's 18,216. That would be 30%. I'd expect some bounces along the way, and that two-day volatility play typically takes anywhere from, I think, 14 to 30 days to complete. Um, let's see, uh, just on the last two day cycle, excuse me, um, two day cycle from this low to high 27 bars. That was two months, 27 bars. That's roughly two months, 53 days. Um, how long did this one take? One month, and this one, one month. Do we see any others on the charts? Well, two-day volatility expansion from this low to high. I'm just just doing, you know, a little back testing here, 23 bars. So, you know, somewhere between 30 days and two months. Um, is it going to happen fast? I don't know. I don't have to crystal ball for that one. You got daily momentum continuing to the downside as long as we're below 27,000. And what else? Four or five day, five day. The one, uh, the one signal that is, you know, uh, giving us that potential for more upside and an upside resolution. Well, five day uh, is crossed up right now. We'll cross down below 25, 648. The five day is going to close in one day, 11 an hour. So I would suspect that we get a bit of a move in the next 24 to 48 hours, maybe around Thursday or whenever the CPI print is, which was that this morning? No, today uh, news looks bullish for the dollar, but New home sales and new home sales month over month. Um, I don't know about you guys, but out here in California, I think home prices are still going up. <laughs> A lot of demand from the rental market as well. Uh, durable goods coming in tomorrow. Durable goods. So today's new home sales. Tomorrow, durable goods. And Thursday. Is that Thursday? The big day for... Jobless claims, continuing jobless claims, GDP corporate profs, GDP growth rate, and core PCE prices. I, 
So funny how they put that as a low, a low, uh, oh, Fed Chair Powell speech on the 28th. In two days, we get to hear from Jerome Powell. What is he going to say? What is he going to talk about? I don't know what he's going to be lying through his teeth about today or tomorrow, but um, we can all assume one thing, that he is a horrible poker face player. Let's check out the liquidation levels on Bitcoin really quick. <clears throat> Again, price is going to get driven to the liquidity zones. There is more liquidity to the upside. And you can see we're coming into a bit of a bouncy region here. So do we get a little bounce? Um, and then they run it up to grab that liquidity on the... Um, At this level, at how much liquidity? 188 million. That's quite a bit. But to put it in perspective, uh, if we just take a slight wipe down, you're going to see quite a bit more. What else was in the news today? We've got uh, MicroStrategy buying some uber amount of bitcoin at this level at 24,000 uh or what did they buy at 25 let's see if we can find it really quick poor bit boy oh that's the other thing this guy's losing his marbles went outside some guy's house and had his gun with his car oh man poor guy needs to get in some rehab uh praying for the best for him SBF FTX has made yet another attempt to be released from jail for the course of his trial conditions that including assigning a private security guard by him. What else? We got uh, $650 billion industry ETF approval. Wall Street on their way. Uh, let me guess. Chase Bank. Chase UK to block crypto payments, <laughs> citing fraud, scams. Oh, it sounds like the WF stepping in at Chep's Bank. Chep's Bank. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Rob, that's for you, sir. That is for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? All right, back onto the charts. As we are pulling back on the 15 minute. So what is this? What is this? What is this? Asia sets the high and the low of the day. UK uh, kind of, I forgot what the saying is for that, but uh, looks like either a reversal or trend continuations for Mr. Bitcoin at this moment. And for that, I do want to check in on Dixie. So NASDAQ and these guys are having a bit of a day. And I did want to bring up something as well. Cre credit to Mr. Crown on this one. Love that guy. He is pretty cool. Uh, great, great TA, but uh, brought up a pretty big point. So we talk a lot about, you know, when the dollar go up, risk assets go down, dollar go up, risk assets go down. And now everybody's in agreement oh yeah probably gonna come up to the green box the 0.5 of the 618 but sometimes what happens when the dollar goes up well risk assets go up and i'm pretty sure you can start with this period right here july 14 2014 to April 2015, let's take a look at NASDAQ. That was July 2014. Can we even get back that far? But 2014, just to give you one example here. One example, I mean, I don't care what you pick in July of 2014. I'm willing to bet. There it is. July, July 
July 2014. Would have been this area right here. To April 2015. That would be this area right here. So, negating our thesis that, well, dollar go up. I mean, to be fair, that was one year of price action. Price went up 10%, but it still went up and to the right with a big correction down. So, let's take a look at the last, and let's see what Bitcoin did. July 2014 to 2015. Let's take a look at Bitcoin really quick in that vicinity. Let's put it on the weekly and just make it easier for everybody. And for that, I'll use this index right here. July. No, to be fair, Bitcoin went down. Bitcoin went down. Okay. So... Just something to consider here in the background as you are making your technical analysis. July 2014, uh, Bitcoin runs from 643, 643 to April 2015. Yeah, to the lows. 623 down to 215. So pretty nasty correction there. Um, reminding us, you know, the the Bitcoin having is upon us and. Perhaps uh, that is a note for the bulls and the bears. Anyways, just because the dollar goes up doesn't mean that <coughs> risk assets will go down like stocks. At the moment, they are, though. And I do suspect we go to fill the gap, as we've said, said, <laughs> as we've said. Uh, and just by ticking below yesterday's low, that would pretty much can, you know, confirm it. Uh, but yeah, it looks like that gap does want to get filled for NASDAQ, S&P, same thing. Dow Jones, a uh, bit of a different chart, different look. Already made it to the purple 200. It led us to the upside, now leading us to the downside. Uh, checking in. So Dixie looks bullish. Uh, we'll get that economic data coming out. And then Thursday, we get the Jerome Powell speech. So, also, we'll get the, um, the PPI data. Yeah, Thursday, PPI, right? So, GDP and PPI. And, uh, you know, Jeff Gunlock just said, you know, big pitch about how what's going to happen. The dollar's going to get killed. I probably think it's probably another 24, or sorry, 12 months before that happens. ETH Bitcoin popping up. So, some altcoins probably showing some life here. Uh, but it looks like it's going to get rejected at the 21, if not the 9. <clears throat> and then, so I think I went over uh, the levels for Bitcoin, but just in case I didn't, on the more immediate time frame for the Bitcoin on the 4-hour, let's check it out. Declining volatility alongside the HPDR indicator, right? Caught in the middle, so not much from there as long as we're below here. At 26,532, pressure to the downside and um, you know, back above here, it's gonna look good for a run up to about 28,000 bucks. So 27,2, we're a long ways away from that. Uh, but this could be a potential higher low in the making. Potential higher low in the making and Solana looks droopy. I, I, you know, four hour uh, range low at 1833 and to the upside, we're looking at, yeah, and if we just close below this pivot right here on the four hour in the next two hours and 19 minutes, gonna look good for a downside move. Uh, Volatility is just beginning to increase on the two hour time frame, so does it wanna test? You know, do we get above? Oh, we're above 25% right now. And you can see the stokes are clearly pointed down. So probably some more downside there to come for Mr. Solana Bear. <coughs> and 
another one I'm getting a lot of requests on is IMX, doing the full retrace, guys. Probably gonna bounce out the first pass on that purple 200, but any kind of a two hour closure just below this level in the next 18 minutes and two hours, very likely we come down to the next level and probably gonna target, yeah, this, this level at 55 cents for IMX over some time. So even if we bounce as long as we we're below this last lower high, I am targeting a move all the way down to 55 cents. Casta, Casta, is that Casta or Casper? That's Casta. This one's been ripping to the upside. Wish I had me some Casta back here. <laughs> um, Luna also had a pretty good move to the upside. I imagine that fails and we do the full retrace all the way back down. This is a piece of garbage. Um, also a lot of requests on Mr. Pippi coin. Short term down, obviously down. Um, short term down to the bottom side of the range at uh, not, 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 not 0.68, whatever that number is. And lastly, Ethereum, and I'm gonna let you guys go, plan out a big bounce. Um, not, not what I was looking for at the moment. Um, other than that, I do think that, uh, let's see, what's our HPR you're gonna say? That we have low volatility on the hourly and uh, potential for a silver cross to the downside in the making, which uh, this thing's gonna do whatever Bitcoin does, but more, more to the upside and uh, more to the down, well, Actually, not more to the upside than Bitcoin, as ETH Bitcoin is still a bit. Why can I get this off? I want the candle bars off so I can see that silver cross. It doesn't look like it's crossed yet. You can see the price action is covering up this area. But another cross down, right? Usually the second cross is a bit stronger than the first one. So we don't wanna see that happen right now. We want to see this to get pushed up higher and basically just a closure back above this level. Um, you know, back above 1600 bucks, it's gonna to run to 1617. Actually, I think we're gonna run all the way up to a massive zone of liquidity around 1625. So, you know, just an hourly back above 1602 and probably good for a run up to that 1625 pivot. Um, but with the dollar going up, stocks going down, I think pressure is to the downside for the moment. And again, you know, Bitcoin and everything and Ethereum, they're all holding that kind of daily pivot. The last major line in the sand back below there or below this wick for Ethereum at 1465 on any kind of a four hour closure could result in a move down to the 1440 level which I'm gonna pull up the heat map here. Okay, so why do I do this every morning? Why do I make these videos, guys? Uh, definitely helps me put out my thoughts on paper, so to speak. And as the thoughts are coming out, yes, you can see that liquidation level at 1535, that's Pretty much the area I'm targeting. Uh, <clears throat> and again, that's as long as we're below 1600 bucks. Uh, first zone, 1535. Second zone, 1435. So if we break this area, well, not gonna look good for the bull, bulls. For the bulls. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. If you did enjoy some of the content, make sure you like the video, pass it out to a friend, and post a comment below. Take care.